13009 authorizing the purchase of email material software. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Resolution 2013-009. Second. Do I hear a second? Oh, yeah. Second. Oh, okay. You second the motion? Yeah. Thank you. The chair recognizes the uh, maker of the motion to speak on the issue. Uh, this uh, would uh, allow us to purchase software that would automate a very time-consuming process for staff and for council. We've gotten a large number of public records requests this year that require going through a year or more of past emails, finding emails that discuss particular topics. Uh, all city email is a public record and is uh, uh, for privileged material subject to the uh, being turned over in a public records request, and that includes all of council's emails, that includes all of the staff's emails, that includes all of the mayor's emails. When we get one of these requests right now, everybody individually has to go through their own email and find all of these uh, records. <coughs> this software would index all of the email on the server and allow the clerk to quickly run a search, find all emails that match a particular topic, and return them at once. It would save lots of time for the clerk, lots of time for staff, lots of time for mayor and council. Uh, very reasonable cost. Uh, $800 a year after the first year for maintenance. If you look at what it costs to comply manually with these requests, and if you look at what it costs to fail to comply with one of these requests, this software is a bargain. The chair recognizes a second to the motion to speak on the issue. Uh, I have nothing further to say. Debate by the council. I have a question. The, the expense in the, in the staff report under the budget item, it notes that it's not a budgeted expense for 2013. However, there is $7,500 available in the technology equipment software fund. Um, are we intending to, I don't see any, anything in the resolution unless I missed it. Um, are we intending to purchase it from the technology equipment and software fund or from the general fund? Um, I put that in there just so that you guys would know that there is a fund available that this could come from, but it's, it's your choice. I wasn't given any direct, clear direction as to where the funds would come from. Okay, so absent any direction from council, if we enacted the resolution as it's proposed, where would it come out of? Okay. It is a, mm -hmm. the stop, um, Technology, equipment, and software is not a fund. It's a line item inside the general fund. Got it. Thank you. And the great Comments from the audience? The adoption of resolution number 2013-009, authorizing the purchase of email material software. Roll call of council. Council Member Petna? Aye. Council Member Walker? Aye. Council Member Geyer? Aye. Council Member Halsey? Aye. Council Member McCann? Aye. Motion carries. Next on the item, adoption of resolution number 2013 that's zero one zero. Authorizing the purchase of Kia's alley setup for city telephone system. Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve resolution number two thousand thirteen zero mm -hmm. ten. Do I hear a second to the motion? Second. Mm -hmm. 
It has been moved and seconded <coughs> that the adoption resolution number 2013-010 authorizing the purchase of Kia's alley setup for the city telephone system. Right now, if you make the call from anywhere in the city to 911, the address goes to the police department. This puts it up where the different uh, staff phones would be located on that. The chair recognizes the uh, second to the motion to speak. I have no. In the debate for the council. Um, so I, I guess just a little bit of a question, I'll just say it rhetorically. I'm wondering why we're approving a $270 cost. Um, but if we are to approve it, I'm a little worried that if, if the quote is $270 and the, the actual language in the, resolu the resolution, um, the end of section one says in an amount not to exceed $270. So we're going to run into a tax problem where the, Could very the well subtotal be. is $270 and we put tax on it and now you can't cut the check? It could happen, yes. Do we I really? would not have used a resolution. It's a small purchase, but um, apparently it was requested that we pass purchases with resolutions. So. Okay. So if I were to make a motion to amend that section one and give a little bit of room for tax and installation, perhaps. It, do you have a suggestion? Yeah. Uh, we have a, a firm quote for it. The tax is not going to exceed the price itself. It'd still be a small purchase if the tax is 100%. So we strike in an amount not to exceed, and we're approving it. So, yeah. so I'd like to make a motion to amend resolution 2013-010 to amend section one, striking all material on the last line after lo phone location. So we would strike in an amount not to exceed 270 dollars. Second. We're striking a motion. It has been moved and second. Any, any other debate by the council? Comments from the audience? The motion. the motion to amend resolution 2013-010 by amending section 1, striking the words in an amount not to exceed $270. Roll call of counsel. Adopting resolution number 2013 
3-0-1-1, authorizing the purchase of three-year telephone services agreement. Do we hear a motion to approve? Move to approve the resolution number 38. Second. You second the motion. There's been moved and second that the adoption of resolution number 2013-011, authorizing the purchase of three-year telephone service agreement. The chair recognizes the maker of the motion to speak on the issue. We need to approve this. Had we continued our service on our contract and service agreement, the expense that we're going to bear from the one that broke and they had to come out and fix it, we'll probably have paid for this. So anyway, I move that we approve this and keep the service agreement in place. The chair recognizes the second to the motion to speak on the issue. Yeah, this came to finance committee before coming here and it's really a no-brainer. We've already spent more on uncovered repairs than we're likely to pay for the service agreement. Debate by the council. Any comments from the audience? The chair will restate the motion. Adoption of resolution number 2013-011, authorizing the purchase of three-year telephone services agreement. Roll call of council. Councilmember McMahon? Aye. Councilmember Pettman? Aye. Councilmember Walker? Aye. Councilmember Geyer? Aye. Councilmember Halsey? Aye. Motion carries. Item I, approval of the January 14, 2013 City Council meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? Do I see something? Anybody? Move to approve the minutes as presented. Do I hear a second to the motion to approve? I'll second. I wasn't here either. That's why I didn't second it. I was there. They fit my recollection of the meeting. I watched it on video. It has been moved and seconded. The approval of January 14, 2013 City Council meeting minutes. The chair recognizes the maker of the motion to speak to the issue. If you have any. Second. They accurately represent what I recall of the meeting. Okay. I have a question though. Any questions? Why are we voting on these separately? Why aren't they part of the consent agenda? Typically what happens when council members aren't present, the protocol is to put them back in as a business item to allow the council members that were not present to state whether they were able to watch the video or listen to the audio of the meeting. It's just that way. And if you didn't, you can excuse them from voting. Any other questions? Questions have been answered. Any comments from the audience?
I think well, the attorney has on. I, I think the better procedure should uh, be um, that you authorize me to contact Ms. Morris, who I would point out used to work for me or with me. I don't know if you knew that, Mayor, if she worked for me. Who? Uh, Carol Morris. She used to work for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will change your mind. But no, she's a good, she's a good. Attorney. But uh, I have some some concerns the way that this uh, engagement of the Morris Law Firm, specifically um, the paralegal work is being charged at the same rate as the attorney work. And there's no question on travel time. And the agreement directed to the mayor is that my hourly rate is $200 through the end of 2013. I will be the attorney providing all legal services to Pacific, except during a vacation or emergency. So if the council wishes to do that, that's understandable. And then you have 30 days notice to me, of course, but that's beside the point. Uh, what I think should be done is that I should contact her and that we engage her services for this specific project instead of all legal services for the city of Pacific. That's what I understood, just for this project. No, it says, I will be providing, build, I will be the attorney providing all legal services to Pacific. What she means is the legal service for the board and the negotiation. Okay, I, I would like that to be certain, though. I mean, it's up, if the council is not concerned, then I just wanted to raise it as an issue. Well, that gets along the thing <coughs> that I was struggling with is I'm reading the proposal, and, and I would actually go a step further rather than specifying Ms. Morris, particularly if the council is going to put a cap on it, um, if we specify that that we can only hire um, this attorney if upon discovering that there's a ten thousand dollar cap, if that's what we decide, this attorney says no, I don't, I'm not willing to do it for only ten thousand dollars. Now we got to wait for another council meeting to go find another attorney. I would prefer that the council authorize and. We can argue about who we want to authorize to do it, but if we authorize the hiring of an outside legal counsel at a rate or at a total cost not to exceed ten thousand dollars for legal assistance specific to the project, not specify a person, not specify a contract that that may be confusing at best. So I I I guess I did it in the context of speaking against the motion, the underlying motion itself. On the uh, substantial cap, one of, one reason I'm somewhat reluctant on that is that uh, in the changes in fee arrangements and budget section of her agreement, uh, they're quite clear that uh, they will, from time to time, endeavor to estimate accurately your total fees and costs. Uh, these are estimates only. Monthly billing statements to serve to keep you advised of the actual cost of representation. Uh, and again, in the estimate section, you may from time to time ask us for estimates of our fees and expenses, either in whole or in part. We're hesitant to give estimates because of their potential inaccuracy. Uh, if you require it, and we do provide you with such estimates, they'll be based on <coughs> judgments, but always with a clear understanding that it's not a maximum or a fixed fee quotation. We cannot guarantee that the actual fees and expenses will be at or below the estimates because of factors outside our control. So. I suspect that the attorney's approach of uh, consulting with her on modification to this agreement uh, is much more appropriate uh, given that the proposed cap violates the terms of the agreement. I will withdraw my motion and uh, uh, we'll the attorney negotiate with her. Okay, well, I'll withdraw my motion. I will do it a second. Okay, no, no, no. So now I think we're back to the underlying motion, the original motion that Councilmember Putnam made. I forgot who second that. And that motion, as I remember it, was approval to hire, what's her name? Carol Moore. Carol Moore. Carol Moore. And, and I. Oh, we're on 5,000 or 10,000. We removed that. 
We removed the ten thousand. We went back where we started. Okay, then I can move the motion on. Well, except now we're having the ongoing discussion of whether we should do it that way or whether we should instead request the city attorney to consult with her and uh, come up with a revised agreement that we would then approve. Uh, can I say one thing? I think we're talking about anything, Nick. The problem is to get Stewart Road moving, move forward. And I'm quite sure that what we'll do is watch for the, uh, the force involved and we'll keep in contact with her. And I'm quite sure that uh, we'll try to control the cost. And if we get anywhere that we think the cost would be unreasonable, I think I would call a halt and refer that problem to the uh, council for a for, for decision. Say, well, $10,000 in pennies and nickels, especially when they're not our pennies and nickels, they're the taxpayers, and it's well, not going to be reimbursed by the project. The, I, I agree with Ken, though. I'm concerned that she, in her agreement, thinks she's going to be our legal representation, which is not the case. Well, there's another... The people haven't discussed this, but this is what we... Uh, I've been thinking of, and we've been discussing it. Maybe we can charge her fee onto the contract of the uh, project. We're going to look into that. We're going to discuss that. Ken, have you got any? We are. Really, uh, we should be able to. Her fee should be able to be payable through the project fund, of some part of the project fund. It's just a matter of we're not. We're researching it. Well, that's not what the engineer just told us, though. He didn't, he didn't think of it. He wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. Yeah. So there is some, some of the funds, including um, including our public works loan, that may be able to pay for her fee. What he's going by is the TIB money. That would not be able to be used to pay her fee. Okay. See, that's, that's why I say nickel is dying. But we're thinking of yeah. charging it to the uh, project. And We'll talk about it after we get the attorney and uh, we get moving and we talk, we'll talk about it when uh, no. the So I'd like to make a motion to amend if we're ready for that. Did somebody else? Did you have something else to say before no, I, I, I think I'm reading your mind. Okay. So, make the same so uh, I move to amend the motion so that it reads as follows. The City Council authorizes the City Attorney to hire outside council, to outside land use council, to serve specifically on the Stewart Road project at a cost not to exceed ten thousand dollars without prior authorization from the council. I'd like to amend that. I hire that with the with the second amendment. With uh, discussing the same thing. Actually, the council can authorize whoever they want to negotiate any agreement. And we are authorizing by this amendment the city attorney to negotiate the agreement. gives them to negotiate an agreement. Can you restate your motion? Well, I just made it up. <laughs> 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 Can we get it perfect? It, it, it was something to the effect of... Hey, Patty has it. Did you get it, Patty? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, to amend the motion to read, the city council authorizes the city attorney to hire an outside 
because land use council deferred on the Spirit Road project and an amount not to exceed ten thousand dollars. Without that prior without prior, prior approval. Yeah. Thank you. There was talking about that. Because yeah. if she comes back and says, well, it's going to be thirteen thousand or fifteen thousand is our lowest estimate, we can amend. Because if she she has a, a great reputation, <coughs> maybe <coughs> she is because land use attorney. Good. So I don't want to scare her off, but we need to retain some kind of control over the motion. So the motion is that the attorney is going to hire for the city. No. Am I right? No. 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 The attorney is going to negotiate the agreement for the city. Say again. He said the attorney is going to negotiate the agreement for the city. Okay, I agree with that. So that was a motion to amend Councilor Putnam's motion. No, we got this thing so confused. Right? Yeah, I, I think I've got it. You seconded that, right? I seconded it. You seconded it. So it's the maker of the motion, um, <coughs> I think this is a better way to go. Okay, this, this clarifies the resolution considerably and restricts the, uh, the language to uh, the Kent You got a fresh one of these guys? I'll catch you up. Oh, just a question. Yeah, I'll use this one. That's good. So, we're on the motion to amend. I've gone, Gary's gone, now we're debate on the amendment. Okay, why don't you come on? Is there discussion to <coughs> on the motion to amend? Uh, I've already commented. Are there comments from the audience on the motion to amend? <coughs> Just a second here. Wait, uh, can you wait for a minute until we the council? I ask for the uh, audience uh, comments. Sorry, right. I thought you wanted me to do that. I just asked. Oh, I thought you that. Okay, I thought you wanted me to I'm do that. Sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Jane Fancher, 57248 55th Avenue South. I think it is wise to negotiate with the attorney and go over the contract because it seems like some of the language that was put in it um, does maybe by default allow her to be the city attorney and I don't think the council is deciding that issue. Um, it's just the Stewart Road issue, correct? Thank you. Can I clarify that? She won't be the city attorney. All she, all she work on would be the uh, with the attorney on uh, for broadening trucking to uh, settle some questions that we have with the memorandum of understanding. <coughs> Remaining comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. Remaining council debate? <coughs> motion before the council is a motion by me, second by council member Holsey, to amend the motion to read. <coughs> Patty, would you read that for us? <laughs> I've then forgotten the whole thing. <laughs> the city council authorizes the city attorney to hire an outside land use council to serve um, on the Spirit Road project. In, uh, not to exceed $10,000 without prior approval. That's the motion. Okay. Not prior negotiate. Roll call, Council. Council Member Renner? Aye. Council Member Council rules to allow for a motion to waive the fees for the Boy Scouts. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. You already did it. So now we're on the, the underlying motion as amended. We've got the vote on that. So Council Member Putnam's motion is now amended. We're back to the underlying motion as amended. Is there further Council debate? Or call if you've done audience. So 
the motion has been amended and we're now back to council member Putnam's motion as amended. And no audience comments. Left. There appears to be no more council debate. Is there any audience comments? No. Motion before the council is council member Putnam's motion as amended. Roll call. Roll call. Council member Walker. Aye. Council member Dyer. Aye. Council member Hawkey.
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is it a dead issue now? We put it in bed. Well, now we've suspended the rule. So five thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> so now the rules have been suspended. So now they can move to add items to the agenda. The consent agenda. No. Do I hear? So, Trent's motion. No one, huh? Yeah. So Trent's motion to suspend the rules passed. Yeah, we passed. Yeah. So he suspend the rules. So now it's, we can, we you can, can you can go back to the five no, 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 we're past, we're past the attorney part. He wants to add more things to the agenda, and we just suspend the rules. So now, oh. if, if he wants to make a motion, he can. I, I move to refer to the Human Services Committee the possibility of wavering Boy Scout fees. You and I'm walking we're going back and forth, back and forth on the five thousand dollars. No. Councilor Holdy has moved to refer to the Human Services Committee the issue of suspending or waiving the fees for the Boy, Scout. the Boy Scouts for renting this, I believe it's this gym, right? Yeah. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Councilor Walker, second. Councilor Holdy is speaking. I think we should waive the fees, but it seems to be the consensus of the council that we want it to go to the Human Services Committee. So let's send it down for a recommendation. Councilor Walker. That's what I had to say. What the last time to Comments from other members of the council? Comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. Motion before the council is motion by Councilor Holsey to refer to the Human Services Committee the question of waiving the fees for the Boy Scouts to rent the gym. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Since the motion is ruled are still suspended, I would like to discuss an item that I gave to the attorney, which is the mayor has entered into an agreement with the union um, that was not brought to council, wasn't authorized by council, and I'd like the attorney's recommendation on what, first of all, what was agreed to and what is the course of action that council can take? The mayor entered into a letter of understanding with the City of Pacific and Teachers Local Union 117 regarding the wage diversion to the Western Conference of Teachers Pension Fund. The entering into an agreement of this nature, I believe, should have been brought through the Labor Relations Committee of the city, which he is not a member, and it would be my recommendation the city clerk file a union grievance, protesting the bypassing of the normal process under which these things are taken, and that the mayor be reminded that entering into contracts on behalf of the city is an obligation of the city council and not a function of the mayor's office. Uh, I'd like to make a comment on that. I did not agree, or I did not make any agreement. That's the, uh, the public workers' agreement with the, the union representative. She's going back to talk to their representative. I did not make an agreement at all or commit to sit. I think the information you got is your own. This looks like an agreement that's required in your signature. I did not sign it. We're I don't know where that came it. from. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I haven't looked at it yet. I did not make an agreement with that. Well, somebody, the somebody mayor is pulling an end run on me. Well, the mayor indicating that he has not signed it uh, indicates to me that the council should take no action except possibly remind the mayor that entering into contractual authority with the union is part of the uh, city clerk's position under human uh, resources and is an agreement that needed to be approved by the council to begin with. And I don't believe that the, the labor count is, what's the name of the committee? The, the, negotiating, the negotiating committee was not involved, it was bypassed, it should be included as part of the negotiations if they're going to have a letter from him. And I think the city ordinance also says that the council, even if that committee isn't actively negotiating, the council
counsel appoint anyone that's going to negotiate. And that's how it's been done. We just did straight. I did not commit the city. I did not negotiate. It's the workers talking to their union rep. All I did was sat in there and listened to what they had to argue back and forth. The union rep is going back and she's going to write up whatever they discussed and bring it to the city as a grievance. I don't know what it is. So the question for the attorney is, could that be perceived by the union as a negotiating session with the mayor with no tenants? It could be. According to this email, they're expecting his signature to follow through on that. All I say is that I have never committed the city, nor have I agreed to anything. I just stay in there and listen. And they have the right, the workers have the right to speak to their representative and to speak their mind. Would it be appropriate to request the city attorney to approach the union representative and attempt to clarify the situation surrounding it? I oppose to that because I think maybe the union rep will come down and state her grievances with her people during the next work session. Is there, just as a point of information, are there any official minutes kept of those meetings? Is there any independent record of what went on in that meeting? I have no idea what the meeting was. The meeting was about, I'm going to let the union rep, Amy Shannon, to come down and talk to you people on the next work session. She said she would. She's going to come down, present her discussion with her people that she represents. So would it be appropriate to use the attorney to get some of the negotiations being recapped? Yes. I would think. Is the answer that you would want to do that? Yes. It's their business. It's the union business with the workers. I just sat in to listen. I'm not going to make any comments because she's coming down to talk to you people about it. And I don't know enough about it, but I know that that type of thing has been negotiated in the contract in the past. So regardless of if it's a financial, if it's something the city is contributing or if it's something that the employees are contributing, it's negotiated typically into contracts because it requires administration on the city side to do it. Even if it's 100% employee funded, it requires city resources to do it. Why don't you let her handle that? And she'll come down to the council and talk about it. And you people decide. She'll go through your labor union committee and negotiate it. I think you've got your information all mixed up. Well, and the other thing is there was an agreement when we negotiated the last contract that we would reopen the contract in the spring of 2013. And so the negotiating committee, I don't believe, has any intention of opening or negotiating anything outside of what's already been negotiated until we meet in the spring as per the agreement when we did the bargaining agreement originally and approved it last year. My concern here is that even if Mary's intent was not to negotiate an agreement, that from the tone of that email, the union believes what has been negotiated and may be open to a grievance or an unfair labor practice complaint if we do not approve it, even if the mayor did not intend to negotiate it. So if I could respond to that, John. I talked to Eddie Thursday night and told her that in the stance of the negotiating committee, we needed to know before we looked at the positions and talked about some of the changes that they wanted to make in public works that we were going to look at again when we reopened 
the contract in, in spring of 2013, it would have to be after March. After our first quarter, we had a better deal of the numbers. And she was in total agreement with that and knew that we weren't willing to make any changes. And could you specify again, this, the email refers specifically to the voluntary contribution to the supplemental pension right. plan? I'm wondering if she simply didn't consider that to be part of reopening the contract and didn't, if there wasn't a meeting of the minds on what was open for renegotiation at this time. Well, she never even told yeah. me that that was even brought up. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, obviously there's some miscommunication here. I'm just trying to nail down for it. Yeah. I would be happy to make a phone call tomorrow and tell her that, you know, the council's uncomfortable with even a, a memorandum of understanding at this time. Okay. Consent agenda. You are here to listen to approve the consent agenda. Approval of her role in claim bargaining. Move to approve the consent agenda. We'll check on the motion. Second. We'll check on the motion. Have you anything to say about the uh, Mr. Potter? No. I did no? have two questions. Mr. Mr. Walker? Um, there was a couple SOSA law firms. That's through the court. Civil okay. Service. Okay. The attorney and then Red Wing Shoes, there was several thousand dollars in equipment. <coughs> it was like 2500 bucks probably. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the contract that's required? And mm -hmm. how often is that going to hit us? Once a year? Okay, because I don't remember ever seeing those charges before. They were already spent before I got here last week. Okay. Apparently they do it first thing in it's January. Okay. And then I know that at least in the last contract, I don't know if it was in this one or not, but there was a quartermaster type system. How are we keeping track of those there assets? And not a quartermaster in the public works. Public works gets X number of um, parent, um, jeans and shirts and shoes, uh, boots every year. And safety equipment. So, but it's, it's owned by the city, right? Because we buy it. We buy it. So what happens to the stuff they had last year? Um, I have no idea. If, if we don't, if we buy it and they keep it, isn't that a taxable benefit? If we buy it, give it to them to use, and once it's out of a useful life, they give it back even if we can surplus it back to them declared no value, then we shouldn't be tracking that at some level or taxing them for that in that tangible benefit. It would have to be one way or the other. I don't know how it was set yeah. up. I mean especially shoes and stuff like that expensive. Those are a couple hundred dollars worth of shoes. I mean that'll usually work boots are over a hundred bucks. Yeah, that'll get over that I think there's some kind of nominal amount that you can do, but I would imagine that we'll want to so you want to sweet to buy their boots. human resources to ask for uniforms that are used back? No, I'm just asking for the director, the public works director, to let us know what the policy is. Oh, okay. Is, if you can get back to us. <laughs> <laughs> let us know because we'll write one. Because we write that. Because <laughs> to James' point, you have to look at the charter. contract too because yeah. we negotiated. We negotiated that in that they got a pair of boots every year yep. and so many pairs of jeans and yeah. that was part of their contract. Well, I, I don't think the question is whether they're entitled to it, it's whether we need to in some way report it for taxes yeah. or whether they have to give us back their used boots. Exactly. Uh, because I'll, I'll look into it. Because <laughs> at the end, I think the last couple of years of audits is asset yeah. tracking. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, this is brand new boots. Let's start now. So. Or by next week or the next workshop, whatever. It's probably something like the <coughs> policy on it, because I know in the past it hasn't been tracked. It's been just, they get five pairs of pants, five shirts, new rain gear, uh, new safety equipment, and a pair of boots every year. And it has, to my knowledge, it has never been tracked. I mean, we didn't track it in 04. I'm sure we don't track it now. Yeah. So. I have
haven't found any crack in, in the finance law. And there should probably be a policy on it. I, I was thinking of that. We got a lot of time on our hands. Let's refer that to a committee. Oh, fine. Let's do it tonight. We're just done. Yeah. I think my last pair of work was last five years. How about Wolverines? They last two years. Well, Red Wings, you know, I mean, those are $250 bills. At least two years. But, yeah, that's in our contract. That's the union contract. It's in the contract. And the contract, I was on the negotiating committee, so I'm good with that. Just, if we can track it somehow, and if there's no policy, let's work on it. The other thing is that the committee I'm not on finance. Um, we talked about it in our department was, and the, we didn't, the utility guys didn't get in on this discussion. They may not like it, but if we're going to require, if, if we're paying for the shirts, and I realize I'm kind of in a, I'm kind of half and half, so it's kind of tough for me. But if we're pay, if the city's paying for the shirts, then it should have our logo on it. Yep. Find your time or one? Yeah. Cost less. Nobody. Summer. Or, you know. <laughs> 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 we buy used ones from Algona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're buying uniforms, we're making uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're but not specified as uniforms. Well, and and they all do whatever brand they want. Exactly. Be it Dickies, Levi's, Wranglers, <laughs> or. Car. 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 Yeah. Ooh. Well, let's look at the policy, and if we don't have one, we got lots of time. Let's work on it. Yeah, the agenda, huh? Oh yeah, we're on the agenda. Right, orange coveralls. Who <laughs> <laughs> says prisoner? One, one other consent agenda item. Uh, <coughs> ordinarily looking just at the vouchers, uh, we do finally have uh, financial statements through September of uh, last year. <coughs> Uh, in the consent agenda tonight, so uh, we are less than half a year behind. So we, yeah, we've got September. All of you. Okay. We got we got the discussion of consent consent agenda all down pat. Let's take a vote on it. Councilmember Pettman? Aye. Councilmember Walker? Aye. Councilmember Meyer? Aye. Councilmember Halsey? Aye. Councilmember McMahon? Aye. Carrie? Meeting adjourned. Thanks for your help. Thanks. You got that thing flying off and down. We're going to have a roll. I have it now. I didn't have it yet. Wow. Good for you. Yeah.